Welcome to the Master of French DVD series. In this part, we shall examine White's third knight c3 move. I believe this is White's most ambitious way to look for an opening advantage against the French defense. On this DVD, we shall look at it from both angles, how to play with White against the various black responses on move 3, that are knight f6, bishop to b4, or d takes e4. Also, I'll give my recommendation how to play with black according to what I think is best today. Sit back and enjoy and learn about the French. We shall start out with looking at variations arising after knight f6 and e5, which is called the Steinitz variation. After knight f6, white has two main choices, bishop g5 1 and e5 the second. So let's start with e5. The knight now moves f to d7. A less advisable option would be to move knight to e4, because after knight e4 and pawn takes back, the e4 pawn will be a target. And white's best move right now would be bishop to c4, and white has a comfortable position. After knight f to d7, white's best move is f4, which is being played in most of the games. And black plays c5, typically for such pawn structure. As I mentioned in the other parts of this DVD series when we dealt with similar pawn structures, c5 is one of the main ideas of black undermining white's solid pawn center. Another one is trying to get rid of the light squared bishops, trying to exchange these two bishops off the board, keeping only the dark squared bishops on the board, then having blocked pawn structure in the center in the color of the bishop is to the advantage of the other side that could potentially target those pawns while the white bishop here is being limited by his own pawns. And the third, but also equally important plan from Black's perspective is to play f6 at a right moment. White, on the other hand, has space advantage in the center and on the king's side, and White is trying to take advantage of that. White now continues with knight f3, knight c6, and bishop e3. This is the first critical moment where black has several choices that are, I would say, almost equally popular. Let's start first with the old main variation, queen b6. This ambitious move attacks the pawn on b2 and invites white to play knight a4 to attack the queen right away. Then black can give a check, queen a5, and white now plays c3. This has been played many, many, many times over the years, and it leads to some really exciting variations, as you'll find out in a minute. Now, if black tries to play b5, then after knight takes c5, knight takes c5, d takes c5, and b4, which looks not bad for black at first, because now the bishop is threatening to take on c5, but white actually gains a significant advantage after a tricky a3 move, followed by b takes c3 and b4, connecting now this chain of pawns and black's c3 pawn will be lost very soon. I remember the line back in the 80s, starting with cd4, followed by b4, and now the sacrifice on b4 used to be extremely popular, but today they consider it a solid advantage for white. Let's see how. Knight b4. If instead the queen just retreats, white has a solid small advantage with knight takes d4. So knight takes on b4, pawn takes back, bishop takes with a check. Now, of course, important when you're in check, don't automatically assume you have to move your king. And in this case, very important because the white bishop is also under attack, but white can save both, stop the check, and the, save the bishop 
by bishop d2. Bishop takes d2 and knight can only take. Queen needs to hang on to the other knight on a4. And now black can play in various ways. Black has experimented with a number of moves. I'm going to talk about only two of them. Let's start with g5 first, which is kind of typical in the French in such pawn structures, trying to eliminate the strong center e5 pawn of whites. Like, for example, if pawn takes, knight takes, looks quite nice for black, with having all those pawns in the center. Now, Anand played in one game, for example, knight b2, g takes f4, knight d3, b6, king f2, bishop a6, knight f3, and rook c8. And black had a decent game. Well, black, first of all, has all his pawns so far on the board. So that is, they have four pawns at the moment for the knight. So even if they lose one pawn, they have still three pawns that gives them sufficient compensation for the knight. However, white can play better. After black's 13th move, g5, according to today's standing of theory, white's best move is to play rook b1. And after g takes f4, bishop b5. That's why it was important to bring the rook to b1 to prepare this bishop move. If the bishop is being attacked, then white just trades, and the knight can jump into b6, a very nice square supported by the rook. And against other moves, knight c5 is the idea to use the pin. Both the black f4 and d4 pawns are quite shaky, and white can count on a solid advantage here. Let's go back to move 13 where black played g5 in the last variation. Another option is to play b6 right away to open up the diagonal of black's light squared bishop and then after bishop d3 to play bishop a6. Then white's best move is to retreat the knight from the edge of the board to b2 protecting the bishop knight c5, bishop takes a6, queen takes a6, and queen e2 giving white a small but steady advantage. It's true that black still has three pawns for the knight, but unfortunately two of those three pawns are doubled. So it's really only like two and a half pawns, and that's about half a point is white's advantage here. 